Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing with some steel bait and I guess it's a long time no see with the very popular yet uh, underappreciated archetypes like in every single meta there's at least one person that plays steel bait and it's usually because this deck pretty much never dies like in competitive obviously no one plays it but in casual play, it's so solid of a strategy that uh, people will find a way to play it till today. I'm gonna actually play Rolling Stead against this Super 8. Normally, I don't, but like, there's no reason not to. I'm playing against Bowles, who has 6 medals, so pretty much I can safely assume he's pretty new to the game. I'm gonna play Fawn Hut once again and against this Fawn King. I'm gonna cancel everything that he throws at me. He's gonna even throw uh, bullets at me. Which is a perfect case scenario because uh, that means I can just play my Fonkek and get a free reign on uh, my opponent's tower. Uh, I'm gonna play Bomb Girl because why not? If he plays Super Ape, I really don't mind it. I I'm gonna actually suck this uh, T Rex because, yeah, he can try something very tricky and then I don't want to like uh, fall into some kind of trap. I'm gonna play Skeleton Kek in that way that it's gonna cross. In front of the sword, so like <coughs> first, the keg can tank for the swordsman, then swordsman tanks for the skeletons, and then well, skeletons uh, have nothing uh, to tank for them in the next uh, part. But it's uh, basically a plan, and I think my opponent just is frustrated at this point. He still has a bomb girl to deal with, and yet he wastes a ten mana to pretty much stop the inevitable. Which unfortunately I have to break uh, down to him is inevitable. I'm gonna play Bomb Girl in the back because my opponent pretty much refuses to die. Uh, I'm gonna play Fawn Hut because why not? It's gonna deal with the T Rex very well and then it's gonna deal very well with the Super Ape. I actually, I for the Super Ape, I'm gonna add something more. I'm gonna play in my uh, Fawn Cake and I'm gonna get two Skeleton Cakes so they first uh, tank and then. They will spawn the skeletons themselves and the out of damage. He plays a lightning against it, but it's no use because my bomb girl will finish it off. And also, a good tip: don't play lightning against swarm cards because it's very bad trace. Either way, let's jump to the game number two. And the next game will be against Niego, who uh, will be playing uh, Ice Tiny first thing in this game and follows it up with the gunners so pretty much uh, the thing I I expect from him right now is gonna be Super Ape 2.6 I'm gonna play, uh, play in a very provocative way I'm gonna play phones against this Super Ape I would love to obviously get it uh, no hits but uh, it's not too bad I think we get away with pretty decent position right now Absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna play Bomb Girl just to annoy him. He actually gets two hits against me, which was like not the plan. Usually uh, I get away with this position way better. I'm gonna play Rolling Steel on the Skeletons so that I can uh, protect a Bomb Girl. And that's actually a very important thing uh, while playing Steel Bait. Even if it seems like it's not worth it, you actually have to protect this. Uh, you actually have to protect. Uh, uh, what, what am I saying? Uh, the bomb girl from the skeletons because it makes like super ape players uh, cycle very awkward and that's actually a good play to be making even though it seems on paper that it does absolutely anything because you're just spending uh, even more mana on the uh, bomb girl which can be taken at any point uh, with the rolling steel and that's pretty much the point if the bomb girl can be taken out with a rolling steel at any point of the game your opponent will at some point feel like it's the time that i actually take her out with my uh, rolling steel and at this point you can just be very confidently playing phone hex he actually gets to another rolling steel and gets away with very good defense i would say but that's the thing like um, if a steel bait player has a missile, so like classic steel bait and maybe prince bait, if uh, if any uh, of you kinda know what this deck actually is, 
uh, you're good to go and I actually advise you to uh, play these kind of steel baits if you know that your opponent is 2.6 uh, player but uh, pretty much uh, against any other deck uh, it will be like uh, uh, it will be like a super ape 2.6 that's gonna have uh, the advantage because you pretty much cannot uh, realistically deal well with the uh, oncoming onslaught. He's gonna actually get a very good rolling still here, uh, cleaning above my bomb guards. I'm gonna get right now a bit of aggressive since I can and uh, it's gonna be a win for me either way. So I'm gonna just drop a GG and that's gonna be the uh, game number two. Uh, done over uh, against Niego who played a 2.6 Super Ape Cycle. And the next game of today's video will be against Kui with uh, 547 mellows who starts off with a swordsman and a rolling steel so it is very likely that uh, he's gonna be playing the same deck as we do but it can be also the sign of a machine gun so actually I don't have a f clue how did it, how did it, how does it connect but I'm not gonna question things because we are already in a very bad spot so Already from the very start we have to clutch the game and I have no idea how this machine gun just uh, locked uh, uh, instead of like, uh, you know, being normal and locking on my swordsman. Also I cycled back the swordsman because I thought like there's, n there's really no reason why I shouldn't and then my opponent like surprises me with his... Uh, <laughs> with his revelation. Actually, he has a rolling steel as well, which is like double scary. He's gonna get a swordsman against this. I think that's the second hit and it's absolutely fantastic for me because right now at this point I need all the damage I can get. I'm gonna place phones here because oh, why not? He's gonna play a, a machine gun here. So I'm gonna just play a swordsman on the opposite side and frankly, I just realized that I don't have re really good way to uh, deal with his machine gun, so we're gonna actually end up in a base trade because my opponent didn't defend uh, uh, the push at all. So I'm gonna okay, he's gonna he's gonna actually take the tower. Doesn't really matter. I think we're in a very decent spot since we've just tower traded, and I have n absolutely no idea why did he go for that. But yeah, let's just uh, leave the deviations for later. I'm gonna play a phone keg. I'm gonna play some swordsman to tank and these falls will get some damage. Right now the uh, worry that I'm left with is that uh, whether or not uh, can I defend the uh, machine gun and the answer will be promptly answered in a few seconds. I'm gonna actually get a swordsman on top of the machine gun because why not and we actually get away with a perfect defense. Obviously he gets some damage with the archers on the viking tower but we don't care about the viking tower so uh, he might as well just get it. I'm gonna play uh, Phone Cake and Pressure with the Skeleton Cake as well, which I believe was a bad play. Uh, I'm gonna play a Phone Hut here, just to show him who's boss in this land of a... Uh, apparently I don't know the answer myself. I'm gonna have to defend this Swordsman because it was very aggressive for absolutely no reason. And He's gonna actually get my bomb girl. He's getting very aggressive with his troops, and I think that's actually a uh, right approach to the position. But I'm not a fan of his plays because uh, right now I'm gonna be able to uh, get a lot of going. Uh, he gets. Okay. He needs to get a rolling on his tower, and I was. Uh, I don't know if that was a right choice, but we've uh, managed to force uh, a very uncomfy play out of him once again. So we are definitely the winners of this trade. I'm gonna play a uh, it like this. I'm gonna play a uh, phone cake, uh, as well as like uh, some pressure cards here, some phones here. Basically everything that I can to stop this machine gun. And that was absolutely the bad decision that he made. That he gave us uh, not only the base trade but also like the uh, the split lane base trait uh, where we can absolutely get every single troop that we want uh, on his machine gun and he absolutely cannot do anything about it. GG's nice plate. I was scared about this matchup because uh, usually this matchup is good if you have a missile but uh, right now 
you don't and you kind of have to be very tricky in getting his machine gun yet my opponent made very big like strategical mistake by tower trading with us and that's why we're gonna get this game done and move to the game number five M maybe four i don't really remember maybe four of today's video and the next game will be against the user 33 uh, 333,995, which is obviously very hard and inconvenient to pronounce, so I'm gonna just call him user. He's gonna be using a default deck, which is pretty much the thing that I would expect from everyone who's uh, kinda named like that. I'm gonna use the Skeleton of actually to defend the Bomberman because I think this is the most convenient thing that uh, can ever happen to me. I'm gonna play Bomb Girl so I uh, don't have to like play spells on his troops. Uh, this actually will be taken down, I mean, actually, I didn't expect this Bomb Blaster not to connect, so absolutely big W for my towers for putting an amazing work, and I think I'm gonna just cycle Swordsman in the back. Unless he does this, like, absolutely the most random Bomberman at the bridge, and still, you gotta be wondering how does it work, I have absolutely no idea myself, so I'm gonna just ball with it. I'm gonna play Skeleton Cat once again. I'm gonna play Bomb Girl. And basically, for these kinds of matchup where you don't have like a good plan, usually a good plan is either going for the kills or like cycling uh, fawn kegs, like uh, forcing your opponent to respawn and stuff. And second approach you can take, which I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm not gonna be able to take because my opponent already resigned, is like playing very passively and uh, cycling fawn girls uh, behind your viking tower and that's usually the approach that you want to take against the bad matchups or in like uh, double triple mana when your opponent can attack and you pretty much not because if you ever attack like your opponent will just suck a bit of a damage from your keg and then counter push so yeah uh, that's gonna be the game number four very quick as you could have seen so we can swiftly jump to the game number five and wrap this video up and here we go against End Killer, which I suppose is referring to this group of people, which I'm not very proud of, like you probably know me. Uh, Boom Arena is a weird place for that, where you pretty much can name yourself a, a N word and no one will ever do anything about it. Shadow Deaths, by the way. My opponent will be actually playing a Viking, which is a very weird choice. I didn't expect that definitely, but at the same time, I was expecting to not expect uh, anything so it doesn't count. Line from the movie, by the way. Shout out to those who understood it or realized from where it was. So, I actually will take these bone blasters to my face, which was very inconvenient. Maybe I should add something, but uh, I honestly have uh, no idea. I'm gonna play another phone keg hopefully mess him up. I actually won't have like the best response against this digger, so I'm gonna just play a bomb girl at the bridge as a form of retaliation. It's gonna get two hits, which is absolutely beautiful. Then I'm gonna counter his swordsman with my swordsman, there we go. And right now we pretty much will do the same thing that I've told you before. I'm gonna play a skeleton keg in front of the swordsman, very important, so that Keg can tank for the swordsman, then swordsman tanks for the skeletons, and my opponent plays bomb tower and shuts my entire push down. So I'm gonna just play phone keg on the opposite side of the board, so he either has to like take the damage or uh, suck it, and he chooses to suck, which I don't think is actually a good choice. He's gonna only knock one phone with this uh, rolling steel, which was definitely not a good choice. Now I'm gonna get a rolling steel on my own and. That rolling steel will be very big as it's gonna clean out everything. Knock, uh, knock back the Viking, uh, uh, damage the bomb blasters sufficiently. I'm gonna play swordsman on his swordsman because I don't think that there's a better way to deal with that. He's gonna actually play a, a bomb tower, which is very inconvenient. So I'm gonna just cycle a skill pick in the back on the left, right, and center. I'm gonna actually play a bomb girl as well because why not? Maybe we can get a kill on this bomb tower and we absolutely can. So right now he can, he'll have to like deal with double trouble on both lanes. 
He's gonna get a rolling steal, but I'm gonna still get some uh, momentum on the uh, right side, and he has to deal with that, otherwise uh, he insta loses. So uh, I'm gonna play rolling steal here. I'm gonna play uh, some phones to block his digger, but I didn't block it, so that was uh, pretty much a fluke. I'm gonna block this swordsman actually for a banter because. I actually didn't have to do that. I'm gonna play some uh, skeleton kek. I'm gonna play some phone kek, hoping to get some good uh, deals. He actually misses the rolling steal, and that's gonna be the demise for my opponent in his game number five. So, very, very cool game to end this video because my opponent like wasn't having good deck, wasn't playing too badly, but would probably mess uh, some of you because like of his very bizarre game style. Usually, if you don't want to. Don't know what to do against your opponent like i've said two main strategies be ultra aggro and then try to hold for dear life or number two stack uh, bomb girls and basically chill on defense if your opponent ever goes into you just send the counter push on the opposite lane and make him choose so yeah that's gonna be it for today's video today i was showcasing the steel bait gameplay actually double bait gameplay with a mirror to just add more trickery to the arsenal so yeah if you enjoy this type of content make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel if you aren't already i post boomerian content every single day so you can learn how to play a strategy card game called boom arena and you can implement some tips of mine into your own gameplay so yeah thanks for watching make sure to subscribe and i'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of boom arena